heard all around Montana. It's a win. It's a win for the Pecani Nation, Blackfeet, you know, for Native women, of course. And I'm glad that the Golden Globes is starting to acknowledge the talent that comes out of Indian country. A Browning actress wins a Golden Globe, a crowning achievement not only for herself, but the entire indigenous community. Plus, a water main break sends water rushing down a Billings neighborhood, leaving a road torn up just days before frigid temperatures await. And slick road dangers. It could have been so much worse, and I'm so thankful to God that it wasn't. The Billings family left searching for answers after a serious rollover crash. The MTN 530 News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. Montana Congressman Matt Rosendale is set to file articles of impeachment tonight in the House of Representatives. That action is not targeting President Joe Biden, but rather U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin. The move is unusual and accuses Austin of high crimes and misdemeanors for allegedly compromising national security. MTN's Jackie Coffin caught up with Rosendale to understand more of the why behind this political decision. We all remember seeing it, a mysterious object floating over Billings that grounded flights here at Billings Logan Airport. Nearly a year later, what turned out to be a Chinese spy balloon and the handling of that incident is being used as fodder in an impeachment inquiry led by Congressman Matt Rosendale. Impeachment. It's an age-old process written in our Constitution that has recently gained a lot of political popularity. It's not just sort of a throwaway thing to say, like, it's a vote of no confidence. It's different than that. It's actually a vote of this person needs to be removed from this role because they have violated the U.S. Constitution. It's also now the tool of choice for Congressman Matt Rosendale, who is filing articles of impeachment against U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is wrong. It is a very, very um, strong um, step that, that folks would take, uh, that the House of Representatives would take in order to protect our nation. But uh, again, I do believe that this clearly lays out just how much this administration has compromised our national security. Austin has been in the spotlight this month, criticized for not disclosing a hospitalization. He revealed to be part of treatments for prostate cancer even spending time in intensive care. But Rosendale says that's not the only reason he's pursuing impeachment. When the Chinese spy blue entered American airspace, first of all, uh, he was in a state of denial to, to even say that a Chinese spy balloon had entered our airspace. Uh, next, he uh, completely denied the ability for the Chinese spy balloon to maneuver and, and stay in one place for an extended period of time. Rosendale also cites concerns with Austin's handling of the migrant crisis along the southern border, which also led other Republicans to pursue impeachment of another Biden cabinet member, Alejandro Mayorkas, the Secretary of Homeland Security. Impeachment proceedings, once rare, have now become commonplace. The impeachment of Bill Clinton was tectonic uh, to the politics of the day. Now it's, it's another week. But Rosendale argues that in this case, it's necessary, calling Austin's lack of disclosure more than just a lapse in judgment. And the fact that the president of the United States, Joe Biden, wasn't even aware of this, again, it, it should be horrifying to everyone across our country. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. Well, there's a lot of speculation, but no confirmation yet that Rosendale will run for Senate. Another candidate has jumped into the growing race for the eastern congressional seat that Rosendale currently holds. Miles City Republican State Senator Ken Bogner announced today that he will vie for the second congressional seat. Bogner, who describes himself as a staunch conservative and Marine Corps veteran, said in a news release that he's running to restore America's strength and that his campaign will focus on national security, fiscal responsibility, and government transparency. Early this morning, residents on Fairway Drive near Rimrock Road in Billings woke up to an unpleasant surprise. Those in the area say around 1.30 they heard sounds of gushing water and debris rushing down their normally quiet street. Billings Police Department says it was due to a water main break in the area flooding the street forcing the city to close Rimrock between Arvin Road and McCormick Lane around 3 this morning. 
Uh, Rimrock Road is open again and water in that area has been turned back on, but neighbors say that road will have to be redone. And this happening as cold snow and wind are already crippling parts of the state. Chief Meteorologist Ed McIntosh is watching as our winter storm develops and is here now with the latest. Ed. A big thank you to Kathy Stedman for sharing this photo. Of what you can't see around Monida Pass. Look very carefully. You can almost see the road back there. And then Bozeman Pass. We grabbed this one just a short time ago. Well, there's still enough daylight to see it. This is actually looking much better than it did earlier in the day. So we've had a big area with very strong winds. Travel conditions have been very hazardous across western Montana. And a lot of that wind is pushing this direction. That's going to cause some very cold wind chill values across northeastern Montana. For First thing in the morning, check out some of the winds today. 50 over 60 miles an hour. Melville, you really got the winds going along with Will South. 67 miles per hour earlier in the day around the Livingston area. Got to break down the forecast details in just a few minutes from now. This is a historic win. Those were the words spoken by Lily Gladstone during her Sunday night acceptance speech for Best Female Actress during the Golden Globe Awards. Gladstone was born in Kalispell and grew up on the Blackfeet Indian Reservation. It's a victory she is now sharing with the entire indigenous community. And as our Kelsey Boggs found out, Gladstone is an inspiration across the state. Before Lily Gladstone was a star on a national stage, she was making a name for herself here in Montana, performing at theaters across the state. My mom and my dad, my whole life, they've never once questioned that this is what I was meant to do. Crying tears of joy when we saw... Making history. To have Lily get the opportunity to speak some Blackfeet language was amazing. On Sunday evening at the Golden Globes Award Ceremony, a first of its kind. She's the first Native woman to win the... Golden Globe for the Best Actress. I mean, it's not just for her outstanding performance, but it's for the entire Native community. And I think that just speaks volumes. Lily Gladstone was born in Kalispell and grew up on the Blackfeet Indian Reservation. Now she's center stage in Hollywood, being recognized for her performance in the 2023 hit Killers of the Flower Moon, a feat not lost on Superman, an indigenous rapper from Montana who also has established a national following. It's a win. It's a win for the Pikani Nation, Blackfeet, you know, for Native women, of course and Montana itself. But it's about a lot more than the award. It was a historical move, and I'm glad that the Golden Globes is starting to acknowledge the talent that comes out of Indian country. Mo Brinks Plenty is best known for his role in Paramount's hit TV show Yellowstone. He also made history last year at the Golden Globes, being the first American Indian presenter. To be a presenter, that was a first for me, and um, the first for the Golden Globes, and it's 70 you know, or 80 year um, history. He hopes this win will serve a purpose, highlighting the talent that comes out of Indian country. When people think about American Indian people, their minds jump to the past. But here we are in the very much in the present and we are very much coexisting with everyone. Something other indigenous community members also spoke to. I feel like it's a step toward visibility, understanding and an appreciation for native narratives and a broader cultural conversation. It was just a a huge win, you know, not for just her, but just for all of us. A proud moment that is hopefully just the start. Two years in a row, the Golden Globes had made history and gave us the opportunity as Indian people, Native people to make history. We are walking side by side with you. We are trying to achieve the same things that you are trying to achieve as well. In Billings, Kelsey Boggs, MTN News. 52 songs in 52 weeks. Do the math, and that's one song a week for a year. That's a tough challenge for nearly anyone, but it's one that 25 artists from around the globe, including 10 from Montana, recently took on. In tonight's Positively Montana, our Marcus Kakova hears from some of them as they hone their music-making skills. Positively Montana is sponsored by Yellowstone Valley Electric Cooperative. Perfection can be the death of progress. You have to let go of all that and just say, well, this is the best it's going to be right now, and so here it is. Chris Smith is part of a collective of 25 musicians who challenged themselves to make 52 songs 
from 52 prompts across 52 weeks. I never felt like I was a songwriter. I didn't think it was going to be possible. Uh, and then as more I thought about it, I'm like, oh man, I'd love to give this a shot. In case you're not mathing along, that's creating and sharing one song a week for an entire year. Okay, there we go. Being fully immersed in creativity for a whole year, having to bust something out every week, like it's something you develop a relationship with. To an audience of otherwise strangers. It's very vulnerable. I never once ever felt anything but just encouragement and love and just a, a real camaraderie that we're in this together. The group says 365 days of songwriting disarmed their artistic temperaments. It wouldn't finish songs because there would be a section that just wasn't quite right. Preventing the opportunity to pick apart their work, forcing a sort of stream of creative consciousness. I noticed that perfectionism starting to melt away because you have to turn in crappy songs. There's no way to do songwriting that fast and actually come up with good ones every week. The artists say they now see the hand of the creator. The ghost in the machine, as journalist Ira Glass put it, is what makes music special. It's those humans' parts, it's those aspects that are that are not on the grid, the acoustic guitars that are slightly out of tune, that are yeah, not in time perfectly, that grab your ear. After all, isn't that what making music, being human, is all about? Gathering over imperfections, offering and being offered impressions, and improve it. There's a serious community and connection that we've created. I had never met these people before, and it was just like we had known each other for, well, a year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Marcus Kokova, MTN News. Still to come on the MTN 530 News here on Q2, a serious crash just a day after Christmas leaves a Billings man thankful to be alive, but worried about his family's future. And in sports, from the gridiron to the hardwood, one of Montana's most decorated high school football players is traded in his pads for a whistle. We'll explain a little later.